We cannot take a single step forward in any inquiry unless we begin with a suggested explanation or solution of the difficulty which originated it. Such tentative explanations are suggested to us by something in the subject matter and by our previous knowledge. When they are formulated as propositions, they are called hypotheses. Good day, everyone. I am Pacifico Suigo III, representer of the Module 4 Hypothesis and Assumptions. And here are our learning objectives for today. First, you have to explain what hypothesis is and what assumption is. Second, we are to construct at least two hypotheses that might be investigated. Third, we have to illustrate the advantages and disadvantages of stating research questions as a hypothesis. And lastly, to differentiate between directional and the directional hypothesis, some of the types of the hypothesis. Hypothesis, or in plural term, hypothesis, is a tentative solution of a problem. According to Kabir, SMS 2016, in his book, Basic Guidelines for Research, an introductory approach of all disciplines, the word hypothesis consists of two words, hypo plus thesis equals hypothesis, in which hypo means tentative or subject to the verification and thesis means statement about solution of a problem. Hypothesis also is a composition of some variables which have some specific position or role of the variables to be verified empirically. It is also a proposition about the factual and conceptual elements. Hypothesis is called a leap into the dark. A hypothesis is a tentative statement about the relationship between two or more variables. As what the model tree suggests, there are independent and dependent variables. Thus, it will be stated in the hypothesis, the relationship of the both. So a hypothesis should be a specific, a testable prediction of what the researcher expects to happen in the study. A hypothesis need not to be correct because the hypothesis predicts what the researchers expect to see and the goal of research is to determine whether this guess is right or wrong. When conducting an experiment, researchers might explore a number of different factors to determine which ones might contribute to the ultimate outcome. In many cases, researchers may find that the results of an experiment do not support the original hypothesis. And it is suggested in writing up these results that other options should be explored in future studies. According to Eric Rogers in 1966, hypotheses are single tentative guesses, good hunches assumed for use in devising theory or planning experiments intended to be given a direct experimental test when possible. According also to Kerlinger in 1956, a hypothesis is a conjectural statement of the relation between two or more variables. Here's what I stated earlier. There must be a relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variables in a hypothesis. According to Creswell, 1994, a hypothesis is a formal statement that presents the expected relationship between an independent and dependent variable. So basically, a research question is essentially a hypothesis asked in the form of a question. So a hypothesis is a tentative statement about the relationship between two or more variables. As I've said earlier, there must be, or in order for us to say that a hypothesis is complete, there must include three components. These are the variables, the population, and the relationship of the variables. Next. So assumptions means taking things for granted so that the situation is simplified for logical procedure. Now, unlike hypothesis, assumptions facilitate the progress of an agreement, a partial simplification by introducing restrictive conditions. For example, 
the formulas of statistics and measurement are based on a number of assumptions. Assumption means restrictive conditions before the argument can become valid. Assumptions are made on the basis of logical insight and their truthfulness can be observed on the basis of data or evidences. This is in accordance of the basic guidelines for research and the approach for all disciplines book of Mr. Kabir SMS 2016. So now let us say, or let us now uh, indulge into the nature of hypothesis. So the hypothesis is a clear statement of what it's intended to be investigated. It should be specified before research is adopted and openly stated in reporting the results because this allows to identify the research objectives, identify the key abstract concepts involved in the research, and lastly, it identifies the relationship to both the problem statement and the literature review. So a problem cannot be scientifically solved unless it is reduced to hypothesis form. Thus, when we are making hypotheses, it must be specified. Another thing is that it is a powerful tool of advancement of knowledge consistent with existent knowledge or conducive to further inquiry. So these are the nature of hypothesis. It can be tested, either verifiable or falsifiable. Next, hypotheses are not moral or ethical questions. It is neither too specific nor too general, meaning it must be uh, on the center, no? not too specific and not too general. Fourth one, it is a prediction of consequences. And lastly, it is considered valuable even if proven false. So we have the types of hypothesis. We have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is designated by H0 or HN, pronounced as HO or H null. The alternative hypothesis is designated by H1 or HA for the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis represents a theory that has been put forward either because it is believed to be true or because it is to be used as basis for argument but has not been proved and has serious outcome if incorrect decision is made. The alternative hypothesis is a statement of what the hypothesis test is set up to establish. It is the opposite of the null hypothesis. An alternative hypothesis is rich only if the null hypothesis is rejected. Frequently, alternative is actual desired inclusion of the researcher. So here is an example. So in a clinical trial of a new drug, the null, the null hypothesis might be that the new drug is no better on average than the current drug. So we would write the null hypothesis that there is no significant or there is no difference between two drugs on average. The alternative hypothesis might be that the new drug has a different effect on average compared to that of the current drug. So we would write H1, the true or the two drugs have different effects on average. The new drug is better on average than the current drug. And also we could write the new drug is better than the current drug on average. Let's move on now to the learning objective two. So recall that the hypo research hypothesis is a prediction of the outcome of the study. The prediction may be based on an educated guess or a formal theory. Here, we can say that an hypothesis should have the relationship of the variables, be it an independent variable or dependent variable. For example, it is hypothesized that children who are shown a video with mild violence will be more aggressive on the playground than those who are shown a similar video without the violence. In here, the independent variable is violence, mild versus none. And the dependent variable is aggressiveness on the playground. So we can see here in our example, it is hypothesized that the children who are shown a video with mild violence, meaning this is, very, this is now the independent variable. 
takes place. Mild violence will be more aggressive on the playground than those who are shown a similar video without the violence. So the dependent variable is the aggressiveness of the children playing on the playground. Next example, there is a significant relationship between brand image and consumer's behavioral intention to buy it. Okay, so we say that the research hypothesis tells us the relationship between the variables. So in here, the independent variable is consumer's behavioral intention, while the dependent variable is the brand image. Research questions are defined or are refined statements of the specific components of the problem, which refers to a statement that ascertains the phenomenon to be studied. The research questions should be raised in an ambiguous manner and hence would help the researcher in becoming resourceful and identifying the components of the problem. The formulation of the questions should be strongly guided with a problem definition, theoretical framework, and the analytical model. So, research question should be raised in an ambiguous manner. So it is uh, so it is stated in a clear uh, in a clear manner, no, With, so that we can uh, this will not mislead readers or the yeah the readers that will uh, definitely read your study when it is published. So the researcher should exercise. You know, the caution while formulating the questions as they are the forerunner for developing hypothesis. So any research questions may lead to flawed or any flawed research questions may lead to flawed hypothesis. Thus, the following questions may be asked while developing, while developing research questions. So these are following questions. Do I know the area of investigation and its literature? So, in conducting or in making your own uh, research study, of course, you need to have a basic idea or knowledge what is going to happen in your study. So you must know no, the area of investigation and its literature. Second, what are the research questions pertinent to the area of investigation? So this is now where you are going to formulate the research questions. Next, what are the areas that are not explored with the previous researchers? No, for some uh, researchers, no, they are they have different uh, hypotheses that are not being explored. Then you are now going to make uh, the area of investigation as the research questions that will lead to your um, hypothesis in that manner. So would my study lead to greater understanding on the area of study? So are enough number of literatures available in this topic area? No, we must also consider the number or a number of literatures available in this topic area. Because at the end of the, uh, or in the process of making your research study, it is not only um, uh, desirable if you have only a few literature about that specific study. It must be based on a previous study for you to have a more inquiry about that area. And lastly, is my study a new one that's contributing to the society or it has been done before? So here are the advantages of stating the research question in the hypothesis. Meaning efficiency. It is somewhat um, efficient no? for us to know the research question in the hypothesis. So it is clear now. Next is the persuasiveness. So the readers are persuaded no? to read the uh to know the results of a specific study because the hypothesis is, uh, uh, or the research question is being stated in the hypothesis. Um, in my uh, experience of my, uh, from my previous um, teachers, uh, one way of checking or looking at in the chapter one is the hypothesis and the conceptual framework or the theoretical conceptual framework. If the hypothesis for them if the hypothesis is good and they have the uh, desire now to read it, so they are being persuaded since the hypothesis has the research question in it. Lastly, we have to distinguish the directional hypothesis and the non-directional hypothesis. So in directional hypothesis, this may imply that the researcher is intellectually committed to a particular outcome. 
they specify the expected direction of the relationship between variables. Just like I said earlier, the researcher predicts not only the existence of a relationship, but also its nature. Scientific journal articles generally use this form of hypothesis. So the investigator bases this hypothesis on the trends apparent from previous research on this topic. So considering the example, a researcher may state the hypothesis as high school students who participate in extracurricular activities have a lower uh, general or general because what um, percentage average than those who do not participate in such activities. Such hypotheses provide a definite direction to the prediction. Also, the example I have uh, stated earlier, you know, the children who are shown a video of mild violence can be uh, react uh, aggressiveness to the playground, uh, playing with the children. So there is this independent variable and a dependent variable, meaning there is a direction of your hypothesis or there is a particular outcome coming from that uh, statement. Next is the non-directional hypothesis. So this form of hypothesis is used in studies where there is no sufficient past research on which to base a prediction. Unlike the directional hypothesis, which I've stated earlier, there must or there must be researches of previous researches that tackles these kind of data. So here, there's no sufficient past research in which to base a prediction. Uh, thus, does not stipulate the direction of the relationship. So continuing with the same example earlier, so a, a non-directional hypothesis would read, the academic performance of high school students is related to their participation in extracurricular activities. Meaning to say that this hypothesis is having no direction. As we all know that academic performance is based only on their uh, performance inside a classroom or in the academic fields, unlike the extracurricular activities that uh, possibly it can be uh, done in the classroom or in the campus, but they are more on being um, uh, indulged on those activities outside the acad academic uh, requirement. Here, the academic performance of high school students is related. No? It's stated that it's related to the participation in extracurricular activities when it is not uh, True, in the first place, if we base on our knowledge and the academic performance, right? When you say academic performance, just like I said, uh, it is based on the academics, not for the extracurricular activities. Thus, this hypothesis is a non-directional hypothesis. Any questions? So I guess if you have queries in the comment, uh, if you have queries, just ask it on the comment section and this will be the end of my recorded presentation. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.